seven foot fence built. And uh, we found that uh, that didn't deter them at all. They would jump over that fence. They'd wait till everything was just absolutely perfect and you'd get up to see it in the morning and it'd be gone. Really, they'd come in and just totally destroy everything. And they, they're not even afraid of you. You can like run right up to them. And they won't, even, they won't run unless you really make a, a lot of noise or something like that. There were so many of them. They were like herds of them were coming in. You know, when you put a lot of sweat and effort into something, to see it dis destroyed, it's, it's pretty tough. My wife being the gardener, she, like, she would just be crying, the damage that they were doing. I phoned uh, the uh, conservation people and everything else, and they said, get rid of them. So I thought, well, I can't pick them up and take them anywhere. So I borrowed a friend's 22, and I got rid of two of them. We've been here ever since 1981. That's about 29 years, 30 years, something like that. We like it up here. You know, the good neighbors and whatnot, you know. A quiet neighborhood most of the time. And, you know, so you know, we enjoy it. I know as a kid, I never liked it because I had to do the digging and the weeding, but now I have my own garden, I just love it. <laughs> yeah, you always got to keep after it, you know, look after the weeds and whatnot, and what, you know. I, I hold it up and weed it and everything else and water it all the time. You know, what else can you do up here? Like, you know, it's, you can't go golfing every day or something like that, so. I, I like my garden. I'm an early riser, so I'd get up, and before anybody else was up, I'd, I might spend an hour out in the garden. It was a, you know, a pleasure for me, rather than just bare concrete and grass. <laughs> Bobby works on her flowers all the time, you know, that keeps her busy. She, you know, she likes flowers until the deer get at them. It's discouraging though, you know, you work like heck getting your garden all ready and your flowers all ready, you know, and then they come along one night and just like a lawnmower goes over it, you know, it's all gone. Well, that's disheartening. Oh, I thought they were just lovely. <laughs> but that's <laughs> soon changed. <laughs> I mean, they were very beautiful to look at, but they are a pest. I'd get up and I must admit there was a couple of times I'd just burst into tears because they had done so much damage. Well, we've lived here for, what, just about two years now and originated from Kelowna and before that it was North Vancouver. 
we enjoyed them the first year. <laughs> but uh, things get tense after a while. Netting over the plants, uh, wire around trees and stuff, but they eventually uh, figure a way in. Was it last year or the year before? The deer get up on their hind legs on the apple tree there, and they grab a branch with their, you know, their their teeth like you know, and they shake it and, and they knock all the apples on the ground and then they eat the apples. I don't get upset as much as Linda does, but uh, you know, it's it's kind of sad to see it. You know, you, you're enjoying a plant and all of a sudden they take the whole thing, it's gone. And one day they did the big feed. And then Linda come out and notice them, they're all gone. We're having a glass of wine talking about it and feeling sorry for ourselves. And I, I look down in front of the house there, and here's the deer laying in the bushes, having a nap. <laughs> I guess needed a little nap after the big feed. But uh, we're talking about him, and he's only 15 feet away, you know, just laying in the bushes. People around here, I don't even bother having a garden. You know, there's no point. So the deer are free to go. It's, you know, I, I think it might get to that one day. It's just why bother? Just don't plant anything. Have some hanging planters, and that's it. They can't reach them, and forget about it. We had a fella, a young fellow living around the corner, and uh, they say his freezer was full of ven venison. And uh, we know that he killed a bear. There was a bear. It got into my garbage, and it got into his. And uh, he was a backhoe driver, and he brought the backhoe into his backyard, dug a hole, and put the dead bear in the hole and buried it again. Because that's that's what that's all he could do. You see, the people, like the higher ups, so to speak, won't do anything about them. They they don't realize how much problem they really are. Because you know they don't come up here, they don't see them, they don't see the damage they do, and they to everybody's property and that. So well, there's no way that we can, you know, get them to do something about it. What I'd like to see, like, is open season once in a while on these deer. <laughs> there's too many of them, you know, and they breed like, you know, cats and dogs, I guess. food and not ours and but I feel sorry for them in a way as they don't know the difference. To start killing the deer off it wouldn't turn me on at all. I mean uh, I'd rather build a fence and live with the situation than do that. It's, I mean I like them around but, uh, and they're cute you know especially when you see a little one you know, I, I can't imagine killing one. It's just ridiculous. I don't want to see anything hurt, you know. But there are times when if I'd had a gun, I would have shot them. You get over that in a hurry. We 
are almost invading their territory, you know, but, uh, and we are in the country, and, and that's what comes with country. Uh, you know, you, you wouldn't want to see it without any animals. Uh, you know, that would be pretty awful. There's pros and cons with everywhere you live, I suppose. Maybe it's time to move on. Oh, well, what can you do? They'll be here coming long after I'm gone. <laughs>